What is up? We are live, guys. This is Mountaineer Paul. Welcome into another edition of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. Thank you all for being here with us this evening as we talk about a pretty exciting topic. Got a small little video clip to play for you. To put everything in context and in perspective. Um, but before we do that, let's, as always, admire and acknowledge our tribal chief, Dutch Miller Automotive before we head on to anything else. This episode of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal. It's right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia, DutchMillerAuto.com, or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing. Only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. Thanks for stopping in today on this episode, guys. Something, uh, you know, I say this a lot here anymore, but it's the off season really for football. Uh, even though we're still in spring practice, I should say it's spring. I got this piece of hair that's driving me nuts here. Uh, one second. There we go. And, uh, you know, looking for content to put out, <sighs> Rewatching a couple podcasts even, guys. And then I, I caught something on that Three Guys Before the Game podcast that kind of tuned you into the mindset of where this op where this team is, this offensive line is, where this general team is, and I think I'd like to title it Payback. Payback against Penn State. Jaquay Hubbard on three guys before the game had this to say when talking about just that topic. Uh, Joe Moorhead. Oh, he yeah. was the offensive coordinator uh, at Penn yeah. State. He recruited me uh -huh. where I was from, and then he went down there, offered me um, – and then I took a visit to that team up north a few times, obviously, because I was in their backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and then I visited Virginia, um, Penn State several times. They never offered me, but we got some payback coming in August for them. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So not only personal payback, but he was also referring to we as in the team, right? Payback for what happened last year in Happy Valley. And others have made mention, and, and, and some people said he has made mention in other places about the late touchdown scored in that game that was obviously didn't need to happen. Uh, the Mountaineers have plenty of fuel for this game, being looked at as second best two years in a row. Last year, it was definitely feasible. The Mountaineers were second best last year in Happy Valley not only being on the road in one of the five toughest road environments in college football, but also just breaking in, you know, Neil Brown was really conservative at that point in time. Uh, our, our young receiving core just had not gelled just yet. Our offensive line kept us in the game, really led by Zach Frazier and those guys. Uh, and C.J. Donaldson was pretty fresh and rushed really hard and continually pushed the chains forward. We held on. We held held their running game in check all night long, and we made Drew Allard look like a stud in his first start. And he had his really his best game of the year was against us. Uh, even through a no a no look pass to Keandre Lambert Smith for his first touchdown, similar to a no. It wasn't a full no look, but it was. I'm looking straight at you, and I throw it over here, kind of thing. It was nice, uh, and, and and you know we just weren't dialed in. We were playing that zone coverage uh, and they ate us apart. So interesting uh, that, that that came up on the three guys for the game podcast. Payback. Sorry about that. <laughs> Somehow I've hit the wrong, I hit the wrong button there. Don't have to give me too many things to do at once. All right. So, Timothy Green says, 
if we beat Penn State, that would be that would really get our season off to a great start. Let's go Mountaineers. David Cummings says this team is competent and they are looking for revenge week one, and they have the guys to do it. Way different team coming into the last this season than the last four years. These guys have something to prove. Tim Bells, thank you for joining. Amen, Mr. Green. Let's go, Mountaineers. What's up, Thomas? Timothy Green says, I just want you to know something. When I get paid, I'm going to become a full member of your channel. Hey, I appreciate that, Timothy. Listen, you support in a lot of ways. You watch all the shows that I do, whether that's over on Hoops in the Hills or here. Um, so, you know, you're my dude, man. I appreciate you, you know. Um, by the way, Tosh, Michael S. Dayhart, and I know I'm forgetting somebody. Oh, shoot. I'm on the spot here, but several people gave $50 donations yesterday on Hoops in the Hills. Um, and, and, you know, I, I know I have piece of crap headphones, and, and they're not always the best. So uh, I will be getting some new headphones this month on the 22nd. So um, be looking forward to that. I appreciate the donations and stuff. I'm going to have to put some of my own money with it. It, it. You know, these here are almost $100 headphones. So. I'm going to have to go above and beyond even that, uh, which is fine. I don't mind to do that or get a microphone, one of the two. Um, and still, still trying to figure out which way to go on that because uh, because I don't have a computer at the moment, um, which is like the best possible scenario or a laptop. Uh, I use a cell phone, obviously, and always have to record off of. But unfortunately, the, the wireless options – are can be sometimes just as finicky, especially if you've had a bad Wi-Fi day or anything like that. And to where I can't hear myself, especially if it's like a pre-recorded video, I can't always tell, you know, if the, the, the sound is bad. So um, unfortunately, there's just, it, you know, it's the kind of world we, we live in. We're kind of at the expense of all this equipment that we use. And, um, so. We're gonna have bad days until I, you know, become a true pro at this, I guess, with the, the equipment. But we're leveling up little by little at a time, right? So it's all we can do. What is up, Tyler Cobb? What's up, Stephen Kill? All Penn State, Penn State fans say it's forty nine to nine, and I understand why they say that, Stephen. You know, although the ones I talk to who are really in the know definitely have respect for us. You know, uh, if I can suggest to you guys um, a Penn State related spot to look. Let me make sure I get the name here right really quick. But it's uh, I was actually on his show as well. He's a really nice guy. Uh, and he covers Penn State. He also covers like alcohol. Uh, a segment with like alcohol and stuff. It's called Penn State Everything. P-S-U Everything. Uh, he, he loves to debate, so if you want to debate something, uh, he, he loves to do that. It's at PSU underscore strong, and he's very neutral. He 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 was on he bought, you know, he was in on Garrett Green before I was last year, you know, because coming into the year, like you guys, a lot of y'all know, I wanted Nico to start just based on Garrett's inconsistency in the past. I didn't know he was going to turn into what he did. Uh, so Garrett proved me wrong. I always, I always like to say that, which is great. But, um, you know, he's a good guy. So there are Penn State fans out there that can be neutral on the subject, but they were, you know, it's similar to us and Marshall in a way that we've been so dominant in the series that, you know, we do kind of feel like Big Brother, and I think that's how they feel. And even though we're Power Five, uh, and more capable of beating them year in, year out than Marshall is to us. I'll tell you what, man. This is the year for us if we're going to do it, right? So and hopefully we re up this series. There's no reason we shouldn't play Penn State every two to three years. Maryland, I really like to play Maryland every couple years, uh, if not every year. Penn Pitt is every year, obviously. Uh, Syracuse, all those teams. I know, I know, we can't get them all, but we have several small rivals, rivalries. Obviously, and Virginia Tech is every should be every year. 
Pitt and Virginia Tech should be every year. And then if we can get every other school on some kind of rotation, that would be perfect. But we should have Pitt State, Pitt State and Virginia Tech every year, no matter what. There's no reason we shouldn't have played for the Black Diamond. I'm glad we got to hold the Black Diamond Trophy another year, but there's no reason we should. We got it by default right now. We didn't play them last year. They were pretty good towards the end of the year. That would have been a good game. Tyler Cobb, no fans or butts about it. WVU is sending the Nittany Lions packing with the big L. Stephen Keel, all-time record is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. Uh, Timothy Green, I thought that was awesome that the donations you guys got. That was cool. Yeah, man, it was cool. Good. I'm glad it sounds good. Glad it sounds good. Tosh, what's up, man? Hey, listen, that meant a lot, bro. He said that to me earlier. I wasn't expecting it. Um, yes, it means a lot. Um, if you like, I was telling, I was saying earlier, if you don't see me get the headphones right away, it's because I'm gonna have to put some of my own money with it. Um, and so I'm, you know, listen, I'm not poverty, but you know, I do better than it. Probably people would probably be pretty shocked to see what Kuz and I, or at least I make on on these shows. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm not making seventy or eighty thousand a year. Fifty, you're not even fifty. But, but we're still doing. I'm still. I'm a single guy. I live by myself. You know. So I do okay. But there are months where it's pretty tight for me. So uh, this is one of those months. Unfortunately, the storm, and everything just. Oh my gosh! I don't even want to get into it. But the storm ruined me this month, guys. Let's just say that much. Uh, <laughs> let's just go there. Um, so, you know, I will get the headphones this month, though. Dollar Cobb says, if you watch Josh Pate, even he said he wouldn't be surprised if Penn State lost to West Virginia week one. Really, he said that. He's been really down on West Virginia this year. Uh, at least before that. Sorry, I'm trying to get my drink here. Uh, at least, you know, and in my conversation, I've had a couple of private conversations with him. He... Hasn't been the highest guy on West Virginia this year. In the past, he has been. A couple of years ago, he was really high on us. I think we must have let him down a little bit. But he, he's a hard guy to get in contact with. I try not to bother him. It's not like we're best friends or anything. But Oh, yeah. I was telling you guys on the show last night uh, that I got a – let me – Throw it in here. Uh, let's see. I think this is it. Is this it? Yeah. I got this last night while we were on the show. And then today I was able to follow through and, and talk with Dusty DeVries, uh, head coach Darren DeVries' brother, for a long time today. We had a really good conversation on the phone uh and he really alleviated a lot of stress from you guys so uh tomorrow i think this tomorrow is where we're going for i'm gonna have coach's other brother on the show um tomorrow on hoops from the hills we're gonna talk about some stuff uh you know they're really plugged in over there guys um when he was at drake they were at a practice a lot um uh, and, and got to know the staff really well so you know, the, what I, I say that to say that they're really close with as brothers with coach and stuff like that. And uh, it was a really interesting conversation. I have to keep a lot of it off the record, so I can't divulge. But just for credibility purposes, I always you guys know me. I like to show the screenshots when I can. Uh, obviously, there was nothing privileged, no information there that I showed. But um, just the fact that we had the conversation. Um, Let's not hit panic mode yet, guys. That's, that's you know, I really had a productive talk with him. And uh, even though this is a football thing, I just wanted to say that because uh, it was on my mind while I had the chance. Uh, hey, Tyler Cobb, I, uh, you know this is off topic and the normal type of video you do. Would love to see some my point of view about the new 82 super league idea that's been thrown around and how I would align it. Yeah. Uh, I, 
I, I would need a little bit of time to, to study it, to be honest, Tyler. I've looked into it, but um, I, I think, you know, it, it looks good. W one thing that I – one take I have on it, if you want to just know a straight-up take I have on it, it's not really on the league itself. But the fact that Gordon Gee is involved, I want to know, does, do you, are you worried because he's involved with this? Does that mean that he knows? We are, you know, on the chopping block of something. If the thing keeps heading this direction for us, or is this him just being proactive so that, you know, trying to get out ahead of it in case it does happen? I'm not saying that we've been told we are or anything like that. <laughs> you know, as the pessimist that I am, that's kind of one of the first thoughts that I have. Why is our guy involved? I thought we were going to be good if it expanded on out to like 60 to 70 in that range. Uh, I've always thought we were going to be okay at the end of the day. Uh, some of this stuff makes me worry, you know. But uh, if you're talking about how I would do it, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, I think, partially, one of the main ways you're going to make that thing work is we're going to have to figure out the basketball contract, right? I, I think that's a huge part of it, even though it has nothing to do with football, because we need the leverage. We do. And if somehow Brett Yormark can redo this basketball thing and, and, and somehow, some way, get it to a point to where we can profit off of it or be in position to profit off of it, off of it as the best basketball league that also has a strong football league, you can't forget about us because we control this now, right? Um, similar to how they are with their contract in football. If you could monetize the NCAA tournament, you just saw the numbers, guys. Uh, 14 million for both the women's and men's championship games. Huge numbers. So it, people watch it, right? And if we can somehow take this thing from the NCAA, form our own thing, however it works, somehow the Big 12 has to be in position to, 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 to get that revenue other than the NCAA, you know? So I think if you can get that and say, okay, fine, you leave us out, we leave you out. We'll do our own thing, you know? That's, to me, has always been a chip I felt like Brett Yormark was working towards. That would be one thing as far as I'm concerned I think we can do, although obviously is the gap as large? No, it's not as large as between – the Big 12 and the SEC or ACC, no. But I do think that we have the brands, especially if we add a, if we're proactive and add a couple others. Maybe a UConn now is worth adding, even if we have to take their football program. If you can take it that direction, uh, you know, you might take the loss in football if you can keep pressing this basketball thing. Keep, I'm still saying football is going to be number one at the end of the day. Uh, but but you have. to, we're never going to outdo them in football, guys. It's just not going to happen. There's going to be no brands effect. We're probably not going to get Notre Dame or Florida State or any game changers like that. I just don't see coming our way. Or Clemson, like, pers just personally, I don't see any of those things happening for us. So I, I think we have to, to, to trust and hope that, that Brett Yormark can work his basketball thing out uh, to the point to where we get a large revenue closer based off of that you know in the worst case worst case scenario we're closed the revenue gap you know so because this continues to widen. i don't know if that's if that helps you at all or not tyler timothy thinks we're gonna have a good year in basketball krista hey krista i have a good feeling 2024 will be the best the beat will be West Virginia's best year in football in a long, long time. Well, let's hope so, you know, because that would mean we would have to win 10 games or more, right? When's the last time we won 10 games? 2010. That's 12 years ago. That's a long time, right? I mean, a lot of, a lot of people were probably watching this were uh, either in college, possibly uh, younger anyway. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't. I was. I was older than college age twelve years ago. But uh, you know, who's counting? 
Yeah, I do too, Krista. Uh, and, and Timothy agrees with you. I, I feel good about the women's and men's basketball too. Coach Kellogg's done a heck of a job. Now, you know, I think one small thing I have to worry about is with Coach Kellogg is would he take the next big job? Maybe. Um, because Kim Stevens going to Tennessee basically assures that re- she's unless she gets fired, she's probably never leaving there, right? That is like, you know, in, in men's college basketball, you've got UConn, Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, UCLA, and Kentucky, right? Those are the six. Well, in women's, you've got UConn, South Carolina is getting up there, uh, Stanford, and, and Tennessee is right there as well, right? And, and you're talking about one of the greatest because of, because of Pat. One of the greatest women's basketball jobs there is in any in, – in, so I, what I say that to say is we may lose Mark Kellogg someday. I don't know if we would have lost Kim Stevens. I'm just – that's the only thing I worry about is if we can get Kellogg, we're good. I really do think we'll be okay going forward. I just worry that he may leave someday uh, and then we missed out on Kim Stevens, which is – could turn out to be like a Saban type miss, you know, because I really do think she's going to kill it. I really do. So curious how other people feel about that too. I, as you can see, I'm not always optimistic, Roy. <laughs> David Cummings, it's a win now culture and WVU is in a situation where we can win now. On another note, how about the baseball team back in full strength and in first place? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you hover around uh, first place with your two best players out in the lineup. For anybody wondering, today's drink of choice is Tropical Crunch Body Armor. I noticed it come up in a conversation, uh, my drink of the day, every time I do one of these. So <laughs> maybe you guys should start betting on it. Tyler doesn't like the logistics of it. I like how the new divisions would be aligned. Most mock-ups I have seen have brought back Big East, Southwest, and, and Big 8S divisions. Yeah, so Tyler, because Coos does a lot of these videos, and we go out of our way, not and we have a lot of the same subscribers, we go out of our way not to try to step on each other's toes. Uh, and I kind of let him do some of the – I don't let him. I just I just don't get involved with a lot of the realignment stuff. It's not because I'm not interested in it. It's just because he's already doing it, you know. Uh, but this is one of those. There are some where it's like we both need to do it because it's such a big story. This is probably one of those. Um, I have just been so hyper-focused on basketball, and all my sources are in basketball right now, people in the know. And I've even got some sources right now that are in the know more than the people that are usually in the know, you know. And so it's kind of a cool position for me to be in, uh, not trying to be uh, like I'm the man or anything. But, you know, so it's been kind of cool to it's just I'm obsessed with it right now. I'm obsessed with the portal over there. Uh, I'm obsessed with who we might be able to get. I'm obsessed with this 12th to 14th. Uh, visitations, you know, because basketball to me is it's college football's number one, and then number two is college basketball. Then it's the NFL for me. So I, I love college basketball, always have, uh, and always will. So you know, I'm, I obsess over it just like I do the football. But I'm gonna have to snap back into football mode because, well, just like this story here today with with Jaquay. Uh, saying what he said and uh, others are coming back and hitting me and then I've seen the camp performances I, I'm really starting to because once I get in full football mode it's over you know because we're going to be in the portal we're going to be recruiting some more guys out the portal here pretty soon it's going to be fun um, we're going to have the spring game soon and then I'm really going to have like a lot of thoughts on it and we're not too far away from the summer guys and before we know it, we'll be kicking off What's up, Steven? Look at recruiting the Big 12 has less than 10 players in the top 300 until the Big 12 starts recruiting. Better the stigma is going to be there. 
that's fair. Um, is that including Utah and all those teams too as well, Stephen, Arizona, Texas Tech? Uh, I, I know they have probably, probably, probably half of them. Did you see the interview with Huggins where DeVries called him and Huggins told him it was a bad time for him? What? No. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about that, Curtis? Uh, and where was this interview? Thanks, Roy. David Cummings can't wait until for the hoops for the Hills show tomorrow. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, I think it's April. It's, uh, let's find out. Uh, let's see. Somebody else may already know. April 20th, it says. So we've got 11 days. Oh, 21st, 27th. There's all kinds of different things popping up here. Uh, oh, okay. That Never mind. I didn't even pay attention because Notre Dame has the same colors as us. Uh, even though they're not normally said the same. Um, for some reason, it gave me Donor names, even though I said WVU. Yeah, April 27th. You're right, Charles. Timothy, it says the 27th here. Yeah, the portal's insane, man. It is, Jeff. And and it's uh, it's one of those things where you start to deep dive and try to figure out, okay, because, you know, of course, I'm plugged in with every player we've reached out to, and not with them personally, some of them, but, uh, you know, as far as who they are as a player, what they do well, and, and so I really try to try to see what he's seeing and try to predict where he's going next. It's hard to do, you know, because this guy, you know, you can look at what they did in WVU the last couple of years and, and kind of, I could have probably predicted this year Jay and those guys were uh, recruiting. Not this year. It's going to be, you know, it's really going to be different because I, I think we're going to see a lot of Missouri Valley players at least tried for. Um, High-end Missouri Valley players, though. And then probably a few Power 5 guys, uh, hopefully on the big side, but we'll see. You know, I I think they're swinging for the highest and working their way down while also culture fit. So it's kind of like we're probably passing on some players that would be really good, but maybe aren't culture fits. Because at the end of the day, one thing that is um, pretty much all encompassing when you hear about hear about Coach DeVries is culture fit. It has to be that first and foremost. And based on back to this Jaquay Hubbard interview on three guys. That was one of the number one things he said has improved this football team is the vampires, it, you know, the energy vampires, right? Getting the energy vampires out of the locker room. Listen, if you've ever worked in an environment at work with somebody that is constantly negative, if you have to deal with somebody on the phone that is constantly negative, there, there are several situations I can bring up here. You know, for me personally, I was. <clears throat> disclaimer for those of you who don't know that I'm very honest about my life. Uh, I am in recovery, and there was a time when I was in rehab, 12 times actually. Uh, I've been clean for several years now, but I did go to 12 inpatient rehabs. So <clears throat> during those points in time when I was lost in life, there were energy suckers, vampires in these places that either did not want to be there, didn't want to get clean, did not want to improve, uh, or overall miserable, and I can just tell you, it can really affect your life, in like in all facets, especially if you're around these people a lot. So I say that to say culture is, even though it's overdone and over talked about, 
Um, people people use it as an example a lot for things. It's that important for that reason, you know. And I, I believe culture. That's why Neil Brown is succeeding right now is because of culture. And, and I think Darren DeVries is the same, which is why the hire was made. Oh, okay, cool, Timothy. I figured you. I figured you knew what it was. Crystal wants to know if we can get any Kentucky players. I think we'll have a puncher's chance, but they'll probably follow to Arkansas, mostly. Why the hell would Huggins, David Cummings, why the hell would Huggins tell a new head coach he's coming in at a bad time? If he did, I just lost all respect for him. I, I need the source for this, guys, because because I'll, I'll do I'll go I'll get coos. We'll do an episode on that, like today. Somebody find that uh source for me real quick. I need to see the context, David, before I jump to that conclusion, but I see where you're coming from. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing anything, but uh, it's on Twitter. You just sent it to me. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, this is at his fish fry. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know. I'm not trying to duck the question. I don't know enough. All right. He called me. Let me, uh, let me try to get this up here. Uh, let's see. Share this with myself. Copy link. Give me one second, guys, and I'll get this pulled up on StreamYard. <sighs> Let's see. Sorry if I'm uh, – yeah, at least I'm going to try to anyways. Uh, without coups, I don't think I'll be able to do it, guys. But uh, I will repeat what he's saying here real quick if you can't hear it. He called me. He called me. Tried to explain and I tried to explain now bad time. that now is a bad time. I mean, I've been in southern West Virginia. I tried to explain to him that now is a bad time for me because I, I mean, I've been in southern West Virginia. I've been in northern West Virginia. I've, I, you know, I've been, I've been in Charleston everywhere. I've been everywhere trying to help the people in the state of West Virginia. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. I, I, I wanted to see what I could do to help the people in the state of West Virginia. Okay, so, David, uh, I believe this is taking a little out of context. Um, so he's saying that Coach DeVries called him and asked to speak to him, basically, or asked for some advice, and Coach Huggins said, hey, it's a bad time right now because everything he was going through. Some people may look at that and say, hey, why'd you give him the cold shoulder? Don't exactly know what Coach Huggins was doing at the time. And you got to think, guys, this is Huggins' entire life. So the guy that is enjoying the practice facility you built uh, with your hard-earned money that you raised um, is calling you, asking you how best to fill it up with players. I just want to have a. I always put myself in the other person's shoe first, right? It's just something I think you know, because I try not to be judgmental, and that's a good way to do it. If, even if you hate somebody, if you try to put yourself in their shoes first, genuinely, and look at it from their perspective first, no matter how you feel about them, it'll always give you perspective. And whether or not it's good or bad. It's up to you to judge. In this situation, I do think Bob Huggins has a small point, and that is he was extremely busy trying to help the people of the state of West Virginia, and he was trying to get his life together. It just wasn't a good time for him. That could be an excuse or it could be the truth. It's really not for me to say, but I'd love to know more people's uh, – uh, uh, opinions. 
on that. So Bob Huggins kind of cold shouldered Darren DeBreeze a little bit there. Hi, Charles. Very high. Uh, I, I've got it on good authority that the new additions are performing very well right now, uh, especially Hollis, Garns, and Crandall. So uh, Montre just came back. He just got off the uh, injury, or he just got his, his labor. Uh, I, I do, I'm do. i of the opinion that Montre could be the best of the bunch. I'm really high on Crandall as an athlete. Garns is, is really good and, and twitchy and quick. Uh, and then they're saying that Hollis is able to run step for step with E.J. Horton. So E.J. Horton can make the case he's one of the fastest players in the Big 12. He is low 4-3 speed. So if Hollis is able to run with him, he can run with anybody. Name him. He can run with him. So uh, I think it's going to be cool. It's going to be incredible to see the difference in this team this year, especially going to a 3-4. Thank you for sending that, Curtis, by the way. Have you noticed the subtle confidence from Brown this year again, Sir Thomas, he says. I noticed that last year with his interviews and he's here again this year, he has a call about him that's really given it, that really is giving me confidence. Well, it's called not being on the hot seat. <laughs> you know, I think um, a lot of last year, early on was him on the hot seat and, and then slow. He thought he had a good team until you start winning some games. And I think the way they performed in Penn, against Penn state gave him all confidence. That was really technically a, a two score game uh, late. And then that late touchdown made it look worse than it was it made it 38. So, you know, to me, I think that had a lot to do with it personally. Don't forget to like the video guys, as always. Um, Subscribe. If you're not subscribed to Mountaineer Paul Talks Football, guys, it's been a slow, slow drool, dribble here, too. And I think it's because I get the same people in every show, maybe. But if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button for me, man. It would mean a ton. Uh, I've been trying to get to 2,000 for what it seems like a long time now. And it, maybe it's because I do West Virginia only content. Sometimes I wonder if I plateaued on that front. Uh, but, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it. Drop a comment below. You know, if you're watching this after the fact and you have something to say about any of the topics we've discussed, it would certainly be appreciated as it helps with the algorithm most first foremost. And I like to, you know, everybody will tell you, I, I'm pretty good about answering messages as long as I'm not bombarded with them. I mean, some of these get, you know, 200, 300 messages. And it's, hard to, it's hard to respond to all of them. You guys are passionate. Uh, which is to be expected, but it's also to be expected. I'm going to have a hard time getting to all of them, you know. Uh, and, and lastly, you know, there's 200 people in here. If you want to, do, you know, drop a super chat, always, 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 you know, ex be happy to get that. Uh, I, like Koos says, I do this for a living. It's my full-time job. Uh, and I, you know, I ain't rich, so I will take it if you got it. Uh, and, and absolutely, well, I, I will uh, talk about whatever subject you want. All right. Yeah, but you know what, Curtis? I'll say this. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta. Uh, Respect Bob Huggins for telling the truth about it, right? He could have said, yeah, he called, and, and it was what was said was between us. And and nobody would ever have been the wiser, right? You know, so I have to respect Huggins for quit. I got a cat on the, on the move here. Um, I respect him for at least being honest about it, Curtis, you know? A lot of people would have lied in, in front of the camera like that. So, um, But, yes, I do get your point. You, you have a very valid point, and I'm not saying you're wrong. Timothy, one reason I really like to watch your show is that you have a great personality, Paul. And you tell it how it is, my brother. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, I, listen, you know, that's who I am, I guess. Uh, sometimes it gets me in trouble. Coos is... Uh, 
sometimes he's, uh, he's he every now and again can be shocked at how I respond to things. We have two different mindsets. So I'm a lot more confrontational. Um, you know, if I have an issue with somebody, I will confront them about it. Um, if I feel like I'm being messed with, I don't take that either very much, you know, at all. Uh, to, I have to tone it back, though, because when you live the life that I lived, confrontation is like a part of your life. So I have to. But now it's a different kind of confrontation. It's for self-care, for self-love, for, for uh, wanting to change and be better. You know, that's the reason I have confrontations these days. It's not like give me your milk money. <laughs> give me your super chat money. As of right now, what do you think the starting secondary will be? I know it's early. Um, well, I'll say Aubrey Burks is going to be at safety, obviously, one of the safety spots. You've got Anthony Wilson, who's going to be in one of the other safety spots. Um, then you get to the corners. Um, you know, I think Montre Miller are going to end up with one of those corner spots. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, and Aiden Yarns is going to get one of those corner spots. Uh, and, and then the mixture of Crandall, uh, the the Jackson twins, or I think he's got a chance to win one of the jobs later down the line. Um, you know, I, I do think he's going to be really good. Um, am I missing anybody there? Uh, I think we got one other transfer I'm missing here, but uh, for the most part, I think that's the secondary. It's going to be a mixture of those guys. Uh, then you look at linebacker, and obviously I think we have two answers on that right now, and that's going to be that Josiah, Her you know, Josiah, Josiah Trotter is definitely going to start. Um, and then, uh, you know, Trotter is going to start is who I'm talking about. Um, and then it's, you know, in the middle, it's going to be like, is it going to be Ben Cutter? Um, I, you know, he was they were talking about him in practice today. Um, sorry, I had a brain fart. Uh, Reed Carrico is a guy that could be there in the middle as well. Um, no doubt about that. But Trey Lathan obviously is the other guy on the uh, on the linebacker. So I, you know, if you if you hold my feet to the fire, I'm going to say Reed Carrico, Trey Lathan, uh, and, and Josiah Trotter at the linebacker spot, which is a pretty you know that's a pretty beastie. Is then you've got some really good uh, depth there at linebacker. Uh, on the defensive line, you're probably going to talk about uh, the usual suspects there. Uh, they're playing with a three-man front, but I see T.J. Jackson, uh, Sean Martin, uh, and probably Eddie V. Uh, or is, go on, go, quit, honey. She's trying to knock my camera over here. Um, Eddie V, Sean, and, and T.J. Uh, and then you can rotate them in from there. It may, and it may, it may be Fatorma Mulba that starts in the middle. I think it just depends, but they're going to rotate those guys. Um, you only asked for the secondary, and I did the whole defense. I just read that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. As uh, Curtis said, he's for his fish fry, which is raised over 700 grand. Yeah. That's good stuff. Mirror doesn't look favorable. So many programs looking for a basketball coach. Yeah, I know, Charles. Uh-oh, who is this guy? He said, we're not beating Penn State. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I don't see why we can't, you know. Uh, I mean, you can say that. You can come here and say that, absolutely. There's nothing to stop you from saying it, but there's nothing to stop me from replying either. That was a two-score game last year, and West Virginia got better, and Penn State got worse. You know, uh, and that's the truth. You can say what you want, but Penn State was struggling with Illinois. They they, they really almost lost to Illinois. Uh, they, they you know they they weren't they they did finish the season strong, which was good for them, but so did we. You know, and we made it to nine wins. And we return everybody except Zach Frazier, which is a big, it's a huge one. I'm not going to say it's not. But you didn't even play, they didn't, or whoever you are for as a fan, you didn't even see the best running back 
on our squad last year, Jaheim White, who was a freshman All-American uh, and one of the best running backs in the Big 12, if not the second best running back in the Big 12. Nobody's better than Ollie Gordon. I would never say that because Ollie Gordon is the best player in the league. Uh, but uh, outside of that, though, you know, we return, we've got a bunch of transfers in on a defense that was really close to being good last year. I think this defense will be good this year. I think there'll be a top 60 defense, top 50, somewhere in there. Uh, and I think they'll keep us in games. But on the offensive side, we returned Garrett Green, who had 31 big-time throws last year, which led the nation. Uh, and we returned our entire receiving core. And we added a guy from Oklahoma State, Jaden Bray, who has been showing out all spring. Uh, add C.J. Donaldson to that mix and an offensive line that's going to be game. You know, they've got the best left tackle in the league. They've got one of the best left guards in the league. Uh, and, and then you're battling it out at a couple other spots, but they're still going to be good. So, you know, Penn State returns a lot of their people too. I know that. But I do think West Virginia's gotten better than Penn State's gotten better since last year. It's at West Virginia. And I think West Virginia can win that football game. I haven't done a full prediction on that. That's to come. Uh, because I, I still think there is a lot to talk about as far as Cole Nicky and that offense. I want to see the spring game, see what they do at Penn State. Cole Nicky is the wild card in this game for me. Remember what he did to West Virginia the first time we played them when he was offensive coordinator? He, he lit us up for like 50-something 50, 50 points um, and, and ran a completely different offense from the week before, literally like a literally completely different offense. They threw it all over the yard, gets an FCS team, and then read that stupid option they run with Devin Neal and all those guys uh, and really just put us – we couldn't keep up and nobody knew where to go. Uh, it was Lee Koba's first start. I mean, we looked crazy. David Cummings. Paul, I was kicked out of the country I reside in in 2002. I had a drinking problem, and I had to own up to my mistakes. It changed my life. We can get into the specifics at a later date. He needs to own his mistakes. Thanks, David. Um, it's always uh, it's always nice to know that you know my story can pot, you know help somebody in some way, and, and, and I'm sure you feel the same. You know, I always like to say, you know, it's one of the things I was always taught is you know God never puts any more on your shoulders than you can carry. Uh, and I was given these shoulders for a reason. And I've told you guys everything that I've been dealt. Um, you probably wouldn't believe me, to be honest. Um, you know, so uh, at the end of the day, though, there's always somebody that's got it worse than you. And I have to remember that, too, because some days I think nobody's got it worse than me, you know, when it comes to how my life has turned out. Um, you know, I'm 39 years old and not married, never been married and then live in a house, you know, by myself. And sometimes I have to be grateful for that rather than ungrateful because it's all about the mindset, you know? Um, and, and I, you know, I get to do all these cool things now that I never could. So it's, it's, uh, you know, thankfully recovery has given me that. And I hate to think what kind of person I would have been without recovery because the tools that I have to kind of work on my attitude and how I think about things are all there uh, as long as I apply them, you know. So I, I'm glad you said that, David. Um, and certainly we can talk about that at a later date. Sure, if you're talking about hugs, own up to those mistakes. I, I agree, but it, it's hard. And just remember, he's really early in recovery. If you're talking about his recovery, um, he, he's not even a year, year sober or clean, you know, one thing that some of you that may not know any different will get a kick out of. There's two anonymous organizations, AA and NA. And the terminology, similar to football, that they each uses for the same thing, it all means the same thing, is different in each organization. And if you say one at the bit for that place at the other, they'll correct you. Like if you go to an AA meeting, you say clean instead of sober. Somebody will say, hey, you've been sober, not clean. Uh, similarly, in NA, if you go there and say, I've been sober, they'll say, no, 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 you've been clean. Um, it's just, you know, it's so, it's weird. I know I'm off on a tangent over it, but it's, you know, 
it's it's just weird. <laughs> Troll alert. Tyler said we can beat Penn State. We have a top ten pro football focused rated quarterback. Both running backs to lead one of the best running backs in the country. Much improved defense and extremely high moral character. I'm assuming that's what he meant. Dude went to rehab has been clean ever since. Still doing a lot for West Virginia. I think he's owed his mistakes. Thanks, John. Yeah, that's that's who I meant. I said he was running right with um uh, I might have called him Garnett on accident, but um uh, yeah, he's the guy that's been running with EJ Horton strike for strike, Hollis. So uh sometimes I call him Hollis Jefferson. Off the basketball player, I'll get used to their names. It's just, um, you know, haven't really seen them play yet, and it's just all in fantasy land right now. Who do I think the quarterback will be, Jacob? Uh, are you talking about Pitt State versus us? You know, I, I do think that, and there's a lot of people that say, Drew Aller has had a great spring, but so is so is Bo Perbula the backup quarterback for Penn State, who is Garrett Green, similar to Garrett Green, but faster, straight line speed faster. I'm not saying he's better at running or anything like that. He's just, he's just got, he's just, he's just faster, you know? Um, and he really fits what they do from a running quarterback's perspective. And I would be really scared of him in that game, you know? There's a lot of unknowns with it. But go look up his highlight tape, man. It is wicked. He is good. Like, really, excuse me, really good. So, but they've got two quarterbacks just like everybody else. That'd be fun. Rodney Gallagher and the Wildcat. Charles Peterson wants to know, why doesn't Hug's name come up in previous head coaching openings? Do other universities slash AD presidents see him as an embarrassment? not getting through for five looks. Well, he's 70, Charles, you know, and coaches that are not considered to be controversial have a hard time getting jobs at 70. It's just one of those numbers. It's similar to how being 30 as a running back used to be. You're, you're, you're kind of have a shelf life. Um, and after a certain age, unless you're like a Steve Fisher or, or like a Coach K or you look at other guys, you know, like Lou Olson was like that or uh, Sutton was kind of like that. I don't know if he went to 70 or not, but Pete Carroll is a really good example, real exuberant, very young 70. Bob Huggins is an old 70 kind of to me, you know. Uh, he's got all his up here. But word on the street was he delegated everything there towards the end and wasn't as involved as he was before. I, I you know, I don't know if he has the energy to, to really do it. I, I question it, you know, uh, and I know some people don't like that. Um, I would never doubt him fully, but I have questions with Bob, you know, because everything he just went through was hard, guys. It would be hard for a 20-year-old guy much less a 70-year-old guy who's been coaching for 50 years, you know, it's just for 40 years. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think that was real, John. They, they, it had to really fall out for that to happen. Um, at least that's what I've been told. Now, I could be wrong. Joe said, we do too many stupid things. Penn State's good early in the season. Don't make certain careless mistakes. If Penn State doesn't beat us, we'll find a way to beat ourselves. Watch WVU way too long to buy any hope, hype. That's your prerogative, Joe, but I do disagree with that. <laughs> no wife means a peaceful life. <laughs> Most telling somebody to go cheer for Marshall. Gene White will be the NCAA college football game. Yeah, I saw that, Curtis. Josh said, is it just me or does Garrett Green have that Baker Mayfield swagger that automatically pumps all his teammates up? Gets him going. Yeah, he's got a nip factor about him. Um, 
he's extremely confident in himself and and then he you know makes plays in big moments you look at the big time throws he made against both houston and baylor those were in the last minute of the game guys unfortunately houston and hell mary we left a little bit too much time in the clock but garrett green has showed he is a baller you know he's a gamer he's a baller he's a playmaker and a shot caller uh, just like that song Skip Bayless made about Tim Tebow. I don't know if anybody remembers that. All he does is win. All he, all he does is win games. He definitely got that swagger, though. Brad from three guys said that RG3 had a spectacular catch for like 65 or 70 yards. The bride receivers are going to explode. I'm hearing Huddy is playing big as well. Well, and not only him, but uh, EJ Horton has been ripping it apart too, Mo. Uh, he posted a couple videos where he scored there the other day. In my opinion, you know, if you're talking about guys' impact, there's a guy that can make the biggest impact to me, you know, like. He's just got the ability. Not, we don't have anybody that can run with him, you know? Uh, not at his speed. Now, we got guys that can break away, but EJ is like Sheldon Gibson, like, you know, Tavon Austin, like, he get behind the defense no matter what. He get behind it, even if they're playing deep. So I, I think, you know, EJ with another offseason with us, he can really be a surprise breakout guy. Uh, and, and if anything, George Campbell, remember the Florida State transfer that had all that straight line speed that scored 12 touchdowns for us? I'm like, what do you have, like 20 catches, 12 touchdowns? Um, I can see Horton doing something crazy like that, like 20-something yards a catch. I'm really excited about him. Oh, that's cool. Thanks, Mo, for the update. Tyler's calling it now. Garrett Green is going off against Penn State. And Robert Rodney Gallagher is going to have a 150 yard game. Whoa. Why is nobody talking about Traylon Ray? You guys, Jaden Bray has been, to me, what I've, what I've been told, the most consistently impressive receiver all spring long. Uh, he's been from day one to, to now making plays in every practice, like consistently. So. I think Bray is a guy that we have to keep in mind as well. But Traylon Ray, man, I mean, he ended last year as our our best receiver, you know. Would I love to see our Rodney Gallagher be our best receiver because of his dedication and love for West Virginia openly? Yes, I would. Uh, and I think we would all embrace him right back. He'd be a huge star, bigger than he already is, if he was actually really good, too. He's got a lot to live up to with that four-star hype that he had. But Traylon really was putting it on. I mean, he, you saw it last year in North Carolina. I mean, he really sh – Traylon's got a shot to be one of the greats as well. We've got – our receiving core has a lot to prove. But if they do it, look out. Huddy included. I agree. If Horton comes on with Huddy and Ray, it's going to be a great season. I agree, man. I've been of that same mindset since the son of Skeeter. Uh, I think as well that get that Nico can take us to another level because of his accuracy. Now, look, they say Garrett's been working with a quarterback coach and they've been fixing his feet. If he's able to do that, then he can take us there too. Um, uh, for now, though, I think until I see more, the way I view Garrett is a guy that's going to be a, a little inconsistent in the middle of the field. He's going to be perfect down the field with the running threat, and I, that's going to be enough for our offense for now. Scholar Howard-esque, right? But if he fixes that intermediate game, then now, you, now you're talking about a whole different level. Now you are talking about Baker Mayfield type stuff. Um, and that is a very exciting prospect for Garrett. And I hope he gets there, you know. So, but Nico, I do believe they said he's taking a huge step this year. I believe it. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how big of a step that is in the spring game. 
All right, guys, I'm getting talked out. Uh, my mouth is dry. Uh, and I appreciate all you guys for being on here. Um, but you have to you have to holler at me tomorrow. I got uh, got some stuff to prepare for anyway on the basketball side. Um, don't forget to like the video before you leave, guys. There's 215 people in here. Um, I, I would appreciate it if would you leave before you exit off here. If you just click that like button, if everybody here click the like button, this video would do really well. And I know everybody in every YouTube video ever asks you to do that. But this is, like I say, I do this thing for a living, man. So uh, every video I hang on to, every, you know, how it does, I hang on to it. So, uh, you know, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And I thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for being so supportive. Uh, continue coming back. We'll keep growing it. We'll continue talking about your sports. Um, that's really all i got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Jaquay Hubbard says we're going to have some payback for those Penn State and the Lions. Let's see if they damn sure do. I think they do. We'll see you soon enough. But this has been another edition of Mountain Ear Paul Talks Football. This episode is over. I am out, guys.